now that we have the floor laid in, it's uh, time to start on the wall tile. And the first step to this is to find your center line for each section of wall or seat or whatever it might be. So the idea behind that is you want your features ideally to line up and make sense with your grout lines. So I'm gonna use this laser level, just link in the description, love this little thing. And we are gonna eyeball this, I shouldn't say eyeball, but we're gonna use the laser to find the center line of our shower head, carry it all the way down the wall, and we're gonna center our first tile on that same center line. It is vitally important that your first tile be the lowest part of the sloped floor, so that way as you go up, you can trim off the excess rather than try to stretch a tile, which really doesn't work. Um, other kind of important tip here is make sure whether you back butter your tiles or you go right to the wall like you're seeing me do here, make sure you've got a good quarter inch layer there to play with. And it's not so much for tile adhesion purposes, but it's if your wall isn't perfectly straight, that layer back there gives you an option to really squish in a tile if you need to so that they all are laser straight and perfectly flush with each other. That becomes really important the bigger your tiles get. As you see here, I'm doing a one by two foot tile. So you really wanna make sure you got plenty of uh, crap back there, mortar or whatever it is that you choose to use so that you have some wiggle room to play with. It also goes without saying, well I guess it doesn't because I'm saying it, but the importance around getting this first tile perfectly level is critical. If you're going to have a wonky joint, let it be at the bottom, that's okay. Um, when you grout it or we use a sealer there, you, you can blend that and no one's going to see it. But if your walls are freaking crooked, that's going to be a problem. So for my second tile, you can see I chose to back butter it. I go back and forth, it depends what's easier. If you're doing a big wide area, then buttering the wall's usually easier. When you're doing these little end tiles, sometimes just uh, putting it on the back of the tile is, is cleaner and easier. So as I said, the um, floor being your area, your joint, that if something's gonna be screwed up, needs to be the one that's gonna be screwed up. And you can probably see in that, that these are not perfectly, they didn't line up perfectly with each other, as much as I'd like anyway. But because it's at the bottom and I know what I'm gonna do to seal that floor against the wall, I'm not concerned about it. But the following sides as we go around the bench and then around the hot tub jacuzzi side, came out much, much better. But, you know, like I said, if you're gonna make a mistake, that's a great place to make it. Now we're on to my least favorite part of a tile job, the shower niches. So these are those little inset areas that allow you to put soaps and stuff like that in there and have it look nice. Well, if you've ever done one of these, you know just how much they suck to tile. It's all intricate little detailed cuts. You have really no room for error. And uh, I have five of them in this shower. So that is sucking times five. Uh, we're going to start with the back of them and we're using the accent tile that's on the floor as the back wall of the shower niches and um, we're going to need to then cut obviously the sides, the top, the bottom and I am making it even more difficult on myself by buying some nice marble bullnose that I have to cut at 45 degree angles to use as the front trim around each of the five little wall niches. So this is gonna suck. Once you have these things in place, good idea to, uh, here I'm shooting it with a laser, but use a level or use a laser level again, uh, just to make sure that you're nice and straight because there's really no reference points yet in terms of outer tile to bounce it off of. Now that I have my first wall completely tiled, you may notice there's a giant freaking hole in it. And you might be wondering, what is that for? Well, I'll tell you what it's for. It's for body jets. And I've got six of these body jets that we need to install. The problem with these 
is the depth that they allow for for tile and backing board is extremely small so maybe a I don't know, three eighths of an inch or so we're using a pretty thick tile so even if I didn't use the backing board and I just wanted to mount these through the tile I'd really be cutting it really really close actually I don't even think I could get a single thread on there so that is going to be a problem for us so the way I've decided to fix this issue is to actually make this more of an aesthetic piece as well as a functional piece so what I really like about this setup is it uses some really nice brushed stainless steel plates like this for the uh, valve controls so I decided I am going to do the same thing as that, just on a much bigger scale here, and make myself a nice stainless steel panel that will be centered under the nice rainfall shower head and just kinda make a nice little package here. That will allow me to have a very thin sheet of stainless here to mount these guys to. It'll also allow me access to it in the event one of these things develops a leak down the road because if you do it this way and you put it on the tile and then set the tile in if that thing leaks you're screwed because there's no way to disassemble it and get to it without destroying your tile work so i think this is going to work out really really well so let's give this a shot so i went and grabbed myself a 16 gauge sheet of stainless steel and 16 gauge stainless is really rigid stuff this, this is this is solid it's actually quite heavy um, and what we're gonna try to do is make this match that nice finished look of this piece here so that's gonna start by rounding off these edges I want these corners you know we'll give it probably a half inch radius uh, nice round corner there on all four and then we are going to need to center punch and uh, drill out the jets themselves. So we're gonna evenly space these guys. They're gonna sit right in the pocket between those studs. And uh, then we'll get it all plumbed up on the backside and we're gonna plumb it into a loop. Once that's all assembled, uh, we're gonna have to put a little block, a spacing block here, cause I'm gonna want to screw that in to this. I don't wanna rely on adhesive or anything like that. So I picked up some uh, like chrome screw covers so I think that will give it a nice finished look you won't see the hardware and we just got to get the depth here right so that all we need to do is run a bead of silicone around here squish that guy in well connect the plumbing then squish that guy in and uh, yeah Bob's your auntie right so let me start by rounding off the corners Oh, we gonna be there all day doing that. Angle grinder, here I come. So I found it obviously much easier to use the angle grinder to get the bulk of the material out of the way. I was careful not to go too hard at it and keep the heat out of the panel. It uh, can deform it a little bit if you go a little too heavy handed with, uh, with the angle grinder. And then the Dremel with just a sanding disc on there does a really nice job of finishing off that edge and almost polishing it to, to some degree. Really gives it a nice professional finished appearance. Don't worry about that slight discoloration that you see that's actually just a little of the adhesive so that'll polish right out and you'll see that later in the video. So I've laid out a very precise grid of where we're going to be locating the jets as well as where we're going to be locating the hardware to attach it to the wall. So every one of these intersections here on the edges is going to be a jet. And then I will have in alignment with that three screws basically 
with those chrome covers to affix that to the wall. So next thing we're gonna do is grab ourselves a punch. And uh, this is the back side of the panel so that even with the punch, if the drill was to walk, I don't wanna damage the show side. So we're gonna punch these so that we can get our drill bit hopefully centered on those spots and start drilling. Now that we have our holes in the right place, we're ready to step up to the stepped drill bits. These things are fantastic for drilling through metal or just making holes bigger. So these are basically pilot holes on the outside here. So we're just gonna step these guys up to a three quarter inch hole, which is what we need in order to feed the uh, MPT fitting through. And then we're, yeah. So, here we go. To be honest, drilling these actually got old pretty fast and I happen to own a plasma cutter, so if you got the toys, you might as well use them. So, I did drill out a few of them with the hole, with the uh, step drill, but it just, uh, yeah, that got old fast. Stainless steel can be tough to, tough to drill through and Plasma Torch does it in half a second. line will be coming into here which immediately goes into a T so that we can get flow on both sides and we made a loop here at the bottom and that's what allows it to really equalize the pressure between the individual jets so you get a nice even stream coming from all of them you really do have to have you have to have that loop uh, and the same could be said for air pressure or anything like that when you put a loop in the system it just helps to feed from both directions and even out the pressure that you get at each outlet so i am going to put a little bit of a piece of uh, pex onto the end of this and we're going to put a slip fitting one of the shark bite ones which i really don't like 
but for this application I'm not going to be able to get a crimp tool in behind the wall here so that will give me the easiest way to slip this into place and then we can screw it in using the uh, three screws that go right down the center and I am quite happy with how that came out it looks like you know the rounded corners just make it look like a nice finished piece and uh, yeah looks like a human car wash all right so our next video we will be getting into those shower niches obviously a lot more in depth I uh, will show you how to get those done. We will continue tiling our massive freaking shower combo jacuzzi area. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep crossing off things off the list here and getting closer and closer to the day that I can shoot the video of me in my birthday suit and uh, get demonetized. At any rate, I want to thank you all very much for watching. As always, I do appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. And as always, everybody, have a great day.